the 
situation and was not entirely truthful most of the time. Police attended Dan Rillington Place several times to respond to domestic arguments between the two of them, him and his wife. In 1949, Beryl Evans became pregnant and did not want to keep the baby because the young family could not afford it. Christy had loaned them money for rent, and upon learning Beryl's predicament, he offered to help her get rid of the baby, and said that he had medical practice of such procedures. He said he could do the procedure at his house, and nobody would ever know. Reluctantly, Tim agreed and allowed Christy to do the procedure on his wife. In November of 1949, Christy waited until Tim had left and then proceeded to persuade Beryl to breathe in through the same jar and pipe mechanism that was used to unalive Muriel to prepare for the procedure. He then proceeded to S.A. and strangle her before placing her body in her bed. When Tim returned, Christy told him that Beryl had passed away due to complications with septicemia and persuaded him to help hide her body. He told Tim that the police would think that it was his fault. Tim claimed in his later testimony that he and Christy carried Beryl's body down to the first floor flat. Christy had said he would take care of it from there and that Tim should leave the area. He said he could arrange care for their daughter Geraldine with a couple that he knew. So Tim left Geraldine in Christy's care and that was unfortunately the last time he saw her. Christy strangled Geraldine shortly after his departure and wrapped her body up and hid it in the wash house along with Beryl's body. Tim traveled to Merthyr Vale in Wales and stayed with his aunt and uncle. They became suspicious when Tim said that Beryl was staying with her father in Brighton and started telling stories and conflicting things about her whereabouts. His aunt wrote to Beryl's father and discovered that she was not there. Tim ultimately broke down and went to the police station stating that he had unalived his wife and had given her some medication to get rid of her baby and that was what had killed her. After this, the police searched Den Rillington Place and only found the bodies of Geraldine and Beryl and Tim was charged with and Tim went along with it because I guess he very much trusted Christy. All right, moving on. In 1950, the courts decided to prosecute Tim for the unaliving of his daughter, but not wife, as was common at that time. Christy provided evidence against Tim in court, claiming that he was a violent person who had definitely unalived his wife and daughter. Um, Tim did tell the truth in court in the end, but his story was just dismissed since he was a known liar. Christy played on his medical ailments to gain sympathy from the judge and used them as evidence to counter the case against him. His criminal history was acknowledged, but ultimately Christy's testimony was the main piece of evidence. He persuaded Ethel to corroborate his story and why 
she did is not known. However, she was most likely afraid of him, understandably so. So, Tim was found guilty for unaliving his daughter and was executed on the 9th of March in 1950 at Bentonville Prison in London. In 1952, Christie's mental and physical health began to deteriorate, and among other complaints, he reported that he was suffering from insomnia, headaches, and amnesia to his doctor. He was advised to spend some time in the hospital, but he refused, saying that he couldn't leave Ethel alone. Meanwhile, Ethel was also suffering from mental distress, probably because she felt guilty for lying in court and sent an innocent man to his death. Shortly after this, the relationship between Ethel and Christy um, severely deteriorated. And in December of 1952, Christy strangled Ethel and hid her body under the floorboards of his front room after leaving it on their bed for three days. He told his neighbors that Ethel was visiting family and he even wrote Christmas cards to her family on her behalf, claiming that she was too ill to hold a pencil. With Ethel gone, Christy lived alone. Later in 1953, Christy met a drunk, young street worker, Rita Nelson, who was at the time six months pregnant. He convinced her that he could help her get rid of her child and persuaded her to come back to Rillington Place. She was strangled and her body was left sitting on a chair for a day. And then she was hidden in a cupboard in the kitchen. In February of 1953, Christy met Kathleen Maloney in a cafe. She felt sorry for him because he told her that his wife had passed away. She was drinking with Christy and he persuaded her to come back to Rillington Place where she was gassed, essayed, and strangled. Christy stored her body with Rita's in the kitchen cupboard. In March of 1953, he persuaded another street worker, Hectorina McLennan, to accompany him where she too was gassed, essayed, and strangled, and her body was forced into the cupboard with Rita and Kathleen. Christy claimed that he had dinner with her corpse, although this might have been exaggerated. Christy was struggling to contain the smell of the bodies in the house, so he moved out. Um, however, he didn't move completely. He just moved into a more spacious ground floor flat. The horror of Christy's crimes were uncovered when the new tenants of his old flat attempted to fix the shelving in the kitchen. Christy had wallpapered over the cupboard containing the bodies, and the new tenants made the discovery. Soon after, the police discovered other bodies and a tin containing pubic hair, which did not match any of those recovered from Rillington Place, and this implies that there were more of Christy's victims. A manhunt was launched for Christy, who had seemingly vanished. He was homeless, jobless, and penniless, but he managed to keep a low profile for ten days. He was
was found under Putney Bridge on March 30th, 1953. In his interrogations, he claimed that the killings were done in self-defense and described various scenarios which had led to the untimely deaths of his victims. He did not express any remorse for his crimes. He actually blames his insomnia for his behavior, and his lawyers tried to get him an insanity plea. He was sentenced to death for the murder of his wife. He admitted to the murders of Ethel Christie, Ruth Fierst, Muriel Eady, Beryl Evans, Rita Nelson, Kathleen Maloney, and Hectorina McLannan. McLannan. He refused to admit that he unalived Geraldine, which, if you don't remember, was Tim and Beryl's young daughter. He was hung at Pentonville Prison on the 15th of July in 1953. Um, so, yeah. So, that is the case. And, by the way, Tim was pardoned of his crimes and is now an innocent man even though he lost his life. So, what a terrible, terrible case, and what a horrible man, like, shoot. I am glad that he was executed. He very much deserved it, if not worse, but that is just my opinion. Um, rest in peace to his eight known victims. I cannot imagine how scared they were. They trusted him. And this So oh. 